Breaking news, city leaders from three communities joining together to crack down on illegal dirt bike riders across Western Mass. Thanks for joining us for Western Mass News at 6. I'm Jordan Jagelinzer. Those city leaders pleading with the public to help them get these riders off the roads. Western Mass News reporter Lindsay Kane is live for us in Holyoke with the details. Lindsay. Jordan, the mayors from Springfield, Holyoke, and Chicopee all coming together this afternoon to announce new plans to try and get these riders off the roads. City leaders are now urging the public to text in an anonymous tip to 274-637. That's the number you see on your screen. They say if you know where someone is hiding a bike, text in a tip to help officers confiscate bikes before they even hit the road. Or if you see an illegal rider, text in their location. Chicopee Mayor John View tells Western Mass News this dirt bike issue is now a joint issue between several local cities and towns and will be a regional effort as well. Meanwhile, the city of Springfield is waiting on legislation to be approved that would let the city destroy confiscated bikes. If approved, Holyoke and Chicopee will also work to approve the same legislation so bikes can't end up back on the roads. City leaders also say there are other plans in the works to try and crack down on these riders, but those plans are not being disclosed to the public. Live in Holyoke, Lindsay Kane, Western Mass News. Lindsay, thanks for that live report. An employee at the Holyoke Soldiers Home has filed a class action lawsuit on behalf of his co-workers more than a year after the deadly COVID-19 outbreak at the facility. On Friday, the suit was filed in federal court, alleging the home's management at the time of the outbreak placed the workers' lives and health in danger. Western Mass News reporter Audrey Russo joins us now live in Holyoke with more. Audrey. The attorney representing the employee says that usually workers can't sue their employers for a work-related illness or injury due to workers' comp laws. However, he argues in this case, the employees had their civil rights violated. More trouble lies ahead for the former managers of the Holyoke Soldiers' Home, the site of one of the country's deadliest COVID-19 outbreaks in a long-term care facility. A class action lawsuit has been filed by one named employee in federal court representing other employees of the home. Here's who's listed as the defendants, former Superintendent Bennett Walsh, along with the former medical director and three upper level nursing managers. According to the lawsuit obtained by Western Mass News, the employee is seeking to certify a class of people who, quote, like the plaintiff, were employed at the soldier's home during the COVID-19 outbreak between February 1st, 2020 and April 1st, 2020 and suffered harm as a result. The named employee who filed this lawsuit is Kwesi abler Depi, a certified nursing assistant who Western Mass News has interviewed in the past. When we spoke with him in October of 2020, he explained the distressing experiences he faced while working during the outbreak. I had to put two people in the body bag and send them to uh, the refrigerator truck. Fast forward almost a year, and this lawsuit filed on Friday alleges the home's management, quote, made a series of criminally catastrophic decisions that led to the slow, agonizing, and preventable deaths of 77 veterans. It was beyond negligence. You know, they took affirmative steps to uh, damage the health of people. Leonard Keston is the attorney they representing the employees people. who spoke to they us on behalf of Abler Depi on Monday. The lawsuit filed says 83 employees caught COVID-19 at the home. Keston argues the defendant's actions, from misrepresenting the gravity of COVID-19's effects in transmission to punishing employees for wearing personal protective equipment, exceeds a typical workers' compensation claim. He says they violated the workers' civil rights. It's a high bar. It can't be just negligent. That's a shock to conscience. And we believe that that bar has been met here shock and physical illness that also led to emotional trauma, outlined in the lawsuit saying, quote, staff watched in horror as the veterans asked God to let them die. We've been talking to a lot of people and we can feel their pain. Two of the former managers who were listed as defendants in this case, Bennett Walsh and David Clinton, are also facing criminal charges stemming from the outbreak. Those charges were brought forth by the state attorney general, Maura Healy. Now, we've reached out to Bennett Walsh's attorney for a comment. Live in Holyoke, Audrey Russo for Western Mass News. 
Audrey, thanks to that live report, coronavirus cases in Springfield remain on the rise, up 95 cases since a week ago. While city leaders remain focused on getting more residents vaccinated, we wanted to know when harsher restrictions could come into play. Western Mass News reporter Leon Purvis joins us now live in Springfield with more. Leon. Jordan, the new number for the week of August 8th is 374 cases. Now, in getting answers from the Springfield Health and Human Services Commissioner, I asked Helen Colton Harris at what point would they issue new guidance if cases continue to rise. I think the city of Springfield is doing all that they can at this point. We are considering whether or not we need to change our policies. However, at this point, uh, city employees are not accounting uh, for the surge. Western Mass News getting answers from Springfield Health and Human Services Commissioner Helen Colton Harris. She shared with me the latest COVID numbers in the city. Let's break it down for you. The week of August 1st, the city saw 279 cases, but the week of August 8th, that went up to 374. That's 95 more cases within a week. But get this, look at the age group. For the week of August 1st, the 11 to 20 year olds made up 69 cases, 21 to 30, 65 cases. That's almost half of the 279 cases for that week. The week of August 8th, the age group 11 to 20, 66 cases, 21 to 30, 90 cases. Adding in ages 31 to 40 with 69 cases. That's 225 cases out of 374 last week. Also in that same week, 55% of the cases are coming from 30 and under. And 31% from 31 to 50. That's a total of 86% of cases from the week of August 8th came from those 50 and under. I asked Colton Harris directly where these cases are appearing. The number of cases that we see are coming from the zip codes 01104, 01108, and 01109. But there's also the zip codes with a larger population base. And so we can uh, trace them to uh, specific neighborhoods. With vaccination efforts still underway in Springfield, we're told not many people are showing up. The commissioner tells me not a single person showed up at the vaccination clinic set up at the Jazz and Roots Festival while she was there on Saturday. I do not believe that these large events are fertile ground for vaccinations. I think people come out to listen to music, um, to be with their family, to relax, and perhaps they are not thinking about, well, let's get vaccinated um, at this time. When we did Juneteenth, they, we only did two vaccinations there. Colton Harris adds the ramping up contact tracing again, and it's back to basic COVID 101. Live in Springfield, Leon Purvis, Western Mass News. We had a cool and comfortable start this morning in a seasonable afternoon. Temperatures ending up right around 80 degrees in Westfield and Chicopee. We've got upper 70s for highs today farther to the north around Route 2 corridor. Now, as far as current conditions, it's pretty quiet. I mean, we do have a lot of sunshine out there and blue sky, some scattered high clouds around. Wind is light to calm. Dew points are still in that comfortable range, and it's still pretty warm. Temperatures right now are ranging in the middle to upper 70s all across Western Mass. Dew points are still hovering in the 50s, though a few spots are starting to feel a little bit muggier out there. And that mugginess is going to stick around through the rest of the night. Dew points tonight are going to hang out a little bit closer to 60 degrees, and our temperatures will get back to that as well. Right now, we do have a little bit of a break in the cloud cover, but more clouds will be increasing later on tonight. So looking at your evening planner, not a whole lot going on. It's going to be warm. It's going to be a bit muggy through midnight. We'll have some scattered clouds that will gradually increase through tomorrow morning with overnight lows on either side of 60 degrees. Then we head into your Tuesday. Not a bad swimming forecast. Breezes will be light again. We will have some mugginess. Temperatures will get back to the low 80s. Unfortunately, not a lot of sunshine. The cloud cover is going to hang pretty tough, and we may see a stray shower or two. The chances for rain go up as the week continues. I'll have more on that in just a few minutes. Jordan. Jana, thanks. We're also following developing news out of Springfield where a murder investigation is underway. Springfield police confirmed the victim was a woman found with multiple stab wounds on Baldwin Street last week. The victim has been identified as 25-year-old Brianne Boisel of Chicopee. 
Police say officers responded to a report of a person down last Wednesday around 9 p.m. When they arrived, they found the victim with several stab wounds. She died at that scene. The Hampton District Attorney's Office is still investigating the incident. Now over to Wilbraham, where an early morning shooting on Sunday has prompted a police investigation. Police say a specific house was targeted in the shooting and that it was not a random incident. No one was injured, but residents in the community tell Western Mass News they are now concerned for their safety. Wilbraham police are asking anyone with information to call them immediately. A 69-year-old woman was taken to the hospital Sunday after being struck by a car in Northampton. According to police, the woman was walking in a crosswalk at the intersection of Masonic and Mason Streets when she was hit. She suffered non-life-threatening injuries. Police say the driver remained on the scene and was cited. The crash remains under investigation.